Hi and welcome to the Windows System Programming Fundamentals course here on Pentester Academy. My name is Pavel and I will be your guide in this course. When discussing sharing objects, I mentioned three options to do that. One of them is by using names, which we've seen already. The second option is by using something called handle inheritance. With handle inheritance, you can take one or more handles in your process and copy them to a newly created process. So the handles that you want copied, you need to mark them with a flag called inheritable. And there are actually two ways to do that. And then you call the create process function to create the new process. And one of the parameters there needs to be set to true that to say, all the handles I marked as inheritable in my process, please duplicate them and copy them to the target process. And so the target process, when it starts execution, it already has these handles inside that process. So that it can reference the same objects. The only technical problem is how to tell that other process what the values of the handles happen to be because they are not predictable. So let's see how we can do this duplication with handle inheritance and how we can notify the new process of the fact that we did provide these handles and their exact value. So let me go back to Visual Studio and let me look at this uh, handles example here. I'm going to remove everything and I'm going to create an event object just for demonstration purposes. And uh, let's even display its uh, handle value. So I don't expect this to to fail because this is just an unnamed event object. So let's just display the value. So the idea here is let's say I want this event object to be copied to a newly created process. And this is the only way handle inheritance can work. And so to create a process, it's actually uh, non-trivial. We need to create a function called uh, create process, we need to call that function and create process except nine parameters. And we're going to discuss uh, this function in more detail in another course. So in this case, I'm just going to show you how to do that with a very basic example. Let's say I want to create another process. Let's go with Notepad as an example. But in a realistic sense, I'm going to create a process that I want to share something with, so we're probably part of the same system. But in this case, I'm just going to use Notepad as sort of a guinea pig, and I'm going to duplicate one of my handles for this event object to Notepad. Although, of course, Notepad will not know that it actually happened and will not do anything without handle, but just to demonstrate that this mechanism uh, works. And so what I want to do now is first mark this event object as inheritable. One way to do that is to call the function set handle information. So I'm going to use the event handle here and then I need to provide some uh, mask which means which flags I want to change and then the actual value of this flag or flags. And so in this case what I need is uh, handle flag inherit and I want to set that to handle flag inherit. Because by default, handles are not inheritable. And so I need to set that to make it inheritable. If I wanted to remove inheritance, I would just go ahead and put zero here. So once I do that, I'm ready to call the create process function. Now the create process function accepts several parameters. I'm going to walk you through the most important ones. So the second parameter is going to be our command line with the path if we wanted to. And here I'm go going to specify name, which is notepad in this case, and create process in this case will search in system directories and some other locations to locate notepad if I don't provide a full path. So luckily one of the search directories is the system32 directory, and so this is where notepad is and will be found. Then the there is some uh, security attributes properties which I'm just going to uh, do anything with and just going to specify now to get uh, some defaults. And here's the important parameter for our purposes. This is inherit handles. If I specify false, no inheritance takes place and no handles will be inherited by the target process. If I specify true, 
then all the handles in my process that have been marked inheritable will be inherited. And then I have some flags and environment variables and the current directory, all these are just use the default values and finally I have to provide two structures one of them is called startup info and this is an input structure and the first member is a size for the structure and I'm going to zero out everything else which provides all the defaults that are needed in this case they are good enough and process information is actually the result and so assuming this succeeds create process returns true then uh, process information provides a few pieces of information such as the process ID of the newly created process. The same one I can then uh, look up in, say, Task Manager. So here it is, DW process ID. This is what I get here. I also get two open handles to the process and thread, which in this case I don't really want to do anything special, just going to close those, just for a completeness sake. And actually I'm done. And so the idea here is that the handle of the event is going to be copied to the target process and the value of the handle is going to be the same as it is in my process. Why? Because the handle table for the newly created process is empty. And so that value is definitely available. And so the values are the same. We'll see in the next example when we look at duplicate handle that the values are not necessarily the same. So let's see if that works. Let me just uh, put a breakpoint here and let's uh, run until this point. So we get to this uh, create process call. The handle to the event is C8. We can go ahead, of course, and look in our handles application and see if we show all handles that indeed in a value C8, let's scroll here, Here's our event object and currently it has a single handle, which makes sense. Notepad has not been created yet. And so now let's press F10 to step over and here's Notepad. Note has been created successfully. We can uh, also look at its process ID if we want to, but it doesn't really matter. Let's go to Notepad now and we'll notice that in its handle table there's the same handle with the value C8. That's the same value of handle that we got for our own handle to event. And if we go ahead and double click, we'll see that the number of handles is actually two, which means it's the second handle to the same object. And in fact, we can look up the address as well. It ends with 14E0 and go back to our handles application and go and look up this C8 event. We can see indeed it's the same one it's the same one in terms of, uh, of value. Let's just verify that. So here's Notepad. Here's C8 again. Oh, so it's not, not the same one. I'm looking at the wrong Notepad. Well, silly me. Apparently I had another Notepad open here. So here it is, the same uh, address. I shouldn't be keeping so many notepads alive at the, at the same time. And so if you go ahead and double click, it's again uh, two handles because it is the exact same object. So this is the idea of handle inheritance. It's fairly easy to use, but it is limited to this particular scenario where one process creates another process. If the other process exists already, then this is simply too late and handle inheritance doesn't make sense. The problem is that for the child process, it needs to know what the value of the handle is. And so a common trick that allows us to specify that is just to add it to the command line. So we can simply go ahead and say, well, because we know that this one is going to be using the same handle value that we know that if we get some value here, the same value is going to be valid in the new process once we create it. And so technically, we can go ahead and do something that allows us to, uh, to just provide that through the command line. So a quick example, I can just go ahead and use include string. In this case, I want to do it in C++ for simplicity. So the object type is w string. let's call that name. I can go ahead and say that name is going to be notepad and I want to, to give it also the handle value. And so I can go ahead and do that in 
several ways. Uh, one of them is just use the to a w string uh, method that can take anything such as a number. I can go ahead and take this h event and just uh, give it to uh, to this function. So I'm going to just maybe cast that to something so that uh, the compiler is happy enough because it doesn't really like pointers here, but it doesn't really matter. It's just a number. And so I have in notepad with the number of the handle value. And of course, the other process need to know that. So hopefully it's something I built uh, part of the same uh, system. And so the other process knows to look at its command line to know which value to use for that event they want to share. And so this is the, the basic idea. And I do have to do some other kind of silly things here for the compiler to be happy because it wants this uh, value to be in a non-const uh, but doesn't really matter uh, for our purposes. So in this case, of course, it won't be very nice. It won't work properly. In fact, a notepad will interpret that value as uh, a value to, um, to open a file and it will not find that file. Let's see that. So I'm going to run that. Let's see what name has. So name has notepad 208. So if I go ahead and, and run that, we can see that notepad complains that 208.txt doesn't really exist. And it's uh, perfectly uh, happy to create a new file for me. But assuming I'm using another process, which I do know something about, it's just going to read the command line and cast the value to a handle, and then just go ahead and use that for whatever purposes these two processes need to communicate with.